Welcome to Feed That Matters. I'm Annie Laurie Gaylor. And I'm Dan Barker. We are co-presidents of the Freedom From Religion Foundation, which produces this weekly program. FFRF, with 32,000 members, is the nation's largest association of free thinkers. That's atheists and agnostics. And we work diligently as a state church watchdog to keep religion out of government, just like our founders intended. And we invite you to join us or ask for a sample of our newspaper, Free Thought Today, at FFRF.org. Shelley Siegel is an Australian-born singer-songwriter who now lives in California, best known for her songs with secular and feminist themes. And she came to our attention with the 2011 album called An Atheist Album. And since then, Shelley has been touring widely. She's released the albums An Easy Escape, Begin Again, Our Resistance, Forms, Little March with the jazz guitarist Adam Levy, Sidelined, Strange Feeling, Shelley Siegel EP. Her album of jazz standards, Live at Audio for the Arts, is one that I got to play the piano on. And in 2019, Shelley produced the album Holy. And her new, newest album is called Waiting for Water. Thank you so much for joining us today, Shelley. Hi, guys. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be here with you today. So do you remember when we met in D.C.? I do. I played my first ever performance in the United States at, um, at an FFRF event the night before the Reason Rally. You came to Back Washington, D.C. for the Reason Rally, and we got to snag you before that. So. And you performed uh, I Don't Believe in Fairies, one of your early songs, which is still one of my favorites of yours. And I think you performed Saved uh, at that rally. And then we got to visit with you in Melbourne not long after that. Where you took us to see the Blue Penguins uh, yes. south of Melbourne, which is... Yes, and Dan um, performed at my uh, album release party in that downtown Melbourne. That was fun. Uh, an atheist album right there on the Yarra River. Is that how you say it? Yarra, yeah. Yarra River. That was really that was really a pleasure to meet all your friends and your family. And uh, we've run into you around the world. And I think the most memorable was when we were in London at a secular event. And there was a fire alarm in the middle of the night. <laughs> and we were in line outside with you. And Richard Dawkins was somewhere around there. It was <laughs> very memorable. Yes, yes. Everyone in their pajamas. <laughs> and then you remember um, the uh, Rock Beyond Belief, was that it, at uh, Fort Bragg in North Carolina? Yes. I invited you to the stage so you could share some of my time, and the military wouldn't let you because you weren't vetted or something. You were some alien invader, I suppose. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but that was fun. But yes, it's been so lovely getting to, um, you know, experience so much of the secular movement through my music. but. To get to share those times with you and especially you know dan we have we have that um shared passion for music and uh secular activism and we both combine them and it, it's a very special very special thing and it's been uh, a joy to get to share those moments on stage with you and get to share this unique uh music that we provide for people and, and do it together I, I, one of my favorite memories is after at, at the end of uh, the show, uh, everyone was in a party mode, and we just we just played standards. We just mm -hmm. had a jam at the end of the concert and entertained everyone, and you know we were just having a ball together. And you're very a special. you're a young woman, and yet you know all those good old jazz standards from. Didn't you play in your dad's band or something? You you were raised Jewish, right? And you had like a yes. bar mitzvah band or a. Yes, exactly. Uh, so I was brought up in a Jewish uh, family. Uh, that's you know, still a very big part of my, my family's life. Um, I grew up in a Jewish community. I went to a Jewish school and we went, we went to synagogue every week. So it was a very big part of my life and my musical life as well because I sang in my father's, as you say, bar mitzvah band. He had like a, a traditional klezmer wedding band where they would play, they would perform traditional Jewish folk music, uh, klezmer music. And then we would also play top 40 music as well um, at the less religious weddings. And... 
you know, so it was a great musical education. I got brought up with this traditional music, but also with contemporary pop. And then, um, but when I when I went to college, that was when I was introduced to the music of, you know, the old great jazz singers and um, mm. jazz bands. And, and I started, you know, I, then at the weddings, I would perform, you know, those those torch tunes at mm. the in, in the breaks when everyone's having their meals and stuff. So, uh, yeah, I had a great musical foundation. So um, let's talk a little bit about your, your religious background, though, because um, you and you've written a lot of songs, including one of my favorites is Eve, about the treatment of women by patriarchal religion and how yes. patriarchal was the religion that you were brought up at in? I mean, you know, it's <laughs> my parents don't think it was it's particularly observant. I think um, uh, we went to an orthodox synagogue. So at the synagogue that I attended, we practiced gender segregation. Uh, the, men, the men would sit downstairs and the women would sit upstairs. And if uh, for any reason you couldn't make it upstairs, you could sit on the on the men's level, but you would have to sit up the back, um, and there would be a curtain separating you from the men called a mechitza. Uh, and in my synagogue, a woman was not allowed to participate in leading the service. They weren't allowed to sing unaccompanied. Um, they weren't allowed to be rabbis. So uh, even though I was a very devout uh, person and a very devout young woman, and, and my Judaism was very important to me, um, I wasn't able to participate as fully as my brother and my father, who would be called up for the great honor of leading the congregation in song. Uh, and, and so, you know, that was something that I, it was one of the first things that I found troubling. And your dad and, was um, the president of the synagogue, is that right? <laughs> yes. So uh, not when I was, um, uh, he became the president, I think, when I was about 15. Yeah. Or 16. So it was it was later in, in my time at the synagogue. But, um, you know, so I, I think for the most ultra, ultra orthodox, you know, they, they probably wouldn't see us as particularly observant. But for me as a young woman growing up in, uh, in Australia, I felt, you know, in a secular culture, we were very religious and um, it, it was a, a huge dominating part of my life, which I did love at, at the time. Yes. <laughs> but it's it's quite extreme, I think, from the point of view of a typical person to hear yes. about that level of segregation. Yes. And, you know, I, I would talk about it with my family and my brother would say, well, it's only symbolic. I said, it's a literal curtain. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> it is symbolic, yes, but it is also a physical and literal separation. And, uh, you know, but it, it's interesting growing up in that it becomes normalized. And it took me a long time to really understand what it was that was causing my discomfort and to, you know, really be able to say this is wrong and I don't want to participate in any way, in it in any way. And, uh, you know, I, I went to, as I mentioned, a Jewish school and at the, at the school, it was only a moderately observant um, Jewish school, but still we would have prayers every morning. And even as children, we would have like, you know, the, the, um, the boys and the girls would, would say this particular prayer, um, there was a call and response. And I remember saying this at age 10 years old. The boys would say in Hebrew, Dear God, thank you for not making me a woman. Huh. Yes. And, and we would say back, Thank you for making me what I am. And I, I repeated this every morning wow. since I was 10 years old. Yeah, that's, that's a classic. That's, you don't get too much more patriarchal than that, do you? So when did you make your, break, your public break from religion? Um, so I guess I, I personally started questioning, maybe uh, not even realizing I was questioning, just learning things that challenged my worldview and the biblical account of creation that I understood as reality. Um, I started that started when I was 16, when I took biology as an elective at school uh, because I loved animals, <laughs> so I wanted to learn more about animals, and that was when I learned about evolution. I had a fantastic biology teacher. And um, and it just captured my imagination. And I, you know, I thought this isn't how I understood things to have been, but it makes so much sense. And it's so fascinating. Uh, and so that was, you know, I think the beginning of my questioning. And then um, I I had a non-Jewish partner at age 18, and that was such a, a 
divisive and difficult time for me and my family. They, you know, told me that I had to end this relationship, which was such a, you know, a joy in my life at that time. And to me, I thought religion is supposed to be this force for good and positivity. It's not supposed to like break up, you know, a relationship. It's not supposed to be this painful thing that's a problem in your life. And and the God that I believed in was happy for me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, so you're you're um you're giving him a bad reputation with what you're doing is how I felt about it at the time. But um, you know, it was just one more thing on the on the way for me to to see that actually it wasn't this, you know, this pe- this peaceful force for good. And, and then um, you and then you came out with your atheist album, which yes. <laughs> which really made waves across Australia. I saw you on some talk shows and people were buzzing. And uh, we we have to take a break in a minute. Uh, and and we also want to hear a song, a new song of yours. And I hope we have time to put that in. But um, after the break, maybe you can tell us about how your family reacted to this huge change, public change in your life. But you have a new song, uh, the Holy Man song that we want to watch. Can you tell us briefly what this is about? Yes. Yeah, so um, this is from my new album, Holy. And uh, it's sort of a, criti- a criticism of uh, any religious leaders who might use that concept of holiness to create a hierarchy where they, they say, these are the people that are holy. These are the words that are holy. These are the actions that are holy. And they get to define that for us. And this is a, a critique of that hierarchy that often places them above the rest of us. So I understand this is the international premiere. We are very pleased now to have Holy Men. Who is the Holy Man and what does he believe? That we must cover up our bodies We must show humility I believe my body is beautiful And it belongs to me What makes a holy man? What does he decree? There is an order to this place And he's the top of high Shelley Siegel singing Holy Man. And when we come back from this short break, 
she's going to perform live a song about how you can be good without God called My Morality. Hi, I'm Ron Reagan, an unabashed atheist, and I'm alarmed by the intrusions of religion into our secular government. That's why I'm asking you to support the Freedom From Religion Foundation, the nation's largest and most effective association of atheists and agnostics, working to keep state and church separate, just like our founding fathers intended. Please support the Freedom From Religion Foundation. Ron Reagan, lifelong atheist, not afraid of burning in hell. My name is Dana Long, and I'm an out-of-the-closet atheist. Although, to be perfectly honest, there are few conversations in the world that interest me less than whether or not there's a God. I just don't care. But I do care about the plight of humanity, the environment, and what kind of world will be left behind for future generations. As a result, I have no tolerance for the dismantling of the separation of state and church, especially in favor of Christianity, a religion whose ideologies have been used to justify horrific violence and the persecution of women, people of color, the LGBTQ community, and others for centuries. As a feminist, I'm convinced that we can impart better values on society than those found in the Bible or in any religious text. And as an activist, I am appalled at the idea that we should simply accept the hardship and suffering in this world based on the fictitious premise of life after death. There's a lot of work to be done to end violence, eradicate poverty, win gender equality, and rescue the environment. I'm an atheist because none of it will be accomplished through wishes or prayer. Thank you for watching Free Thought Matters. You can find more content by the Freedom From Religion Foundation at our website, ffrf.org. Follow FFRF on Facebook and you'll get notifications about all of our content, including whenever we go live on FFRF's Ask an Atheist. FFRF is also on YouTube, where all of our programs, including this show and our weekly news bites, are available to watch anytime. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you on the web. And welcome back to Free Thought Matters. We're continuing our conversation with a singer-songwriter born in Australia, now in California, Shelley Siegel, and a good friend of ours who just performed for us before the break, her song, Holy Man. And uh, she's going to perform for us something live right now about how to be good without God. It's called My Morality. My morality There's nothing to do with the Bible With the verses of the Quran My morality won't judge you by your spirituality, but by the things that you have done. My morality is not set into stone tablets. Don't even tell you not to hurt children. My morality is not dictated by your deities developed from empathy, dependence, and love. My morality accepts everybody's sexualities, more concern with inequality and validations from above. My morality is not set into stone tablets. You don't even tell that it's worthwhile to be good. For being good, don't say the not to think for yourself. For me, deadly. My morality is not recyclable from memory. It's something inside of me, how I want to be. Treat others how I want them to treat me. Basically, 
physically not to hurt anybody. It abhors any brutality it stems from our common humanity. And that's what my grandmother taught to me. And it's mine because I so that's a song about your morality uh, and about being good without God. But you had quite a break from a religious family, and how is how did that go? Well, uh, at first it was it was quite difficult. I think that my parents, while extremely loving and supportive uh, people, they I think they took it as an attack and a personal attack on their values and everything that they had been trying to teach me that was important. And myself, I was a a very angry <laughs> teenager. I mean, I, I was angry that I felt that I had been lied to and I had been duped in a way and that I had put all of this energy into something that I now felt was a waste and was actually harmful. And so I was quite frustrated and maybe not as articulate as I thought I was <laughs> or as I am now to explain that, you know, yeah, I was very angry. And so it was a really difficult time for our family. But ultimately, I'm very lucky that we were able to get past our differences and, um, you know, my fa my parents are my best friends. And well, I noticed, actually, Shelley, at the, at the Reason Rally, wasn't your dad performing with you at an atheist event then? Yes, I was so proud of him. Uh, he came with me to, to the Reason Rally, which was a big secular rally in D.C., and he, he performed on stage with me. I introduced him to the crowd. I said, this is my father. He's the president of an Orthodox synagogue and he's here supporting me. And it was beautiful. It was really, it was a really incredible experience. And we, we find the places where our worldviews align, which is we're both humanists. So during this pandemic, how has, how have you been surviving? It's been really tough, um, to be honest. You know, I, I'm, I miss touring, I miss performing and you know, definitely miss the, the revenue that um, is dependent on that. So uh, I'm trying to adjust and uh, doing more more online work as I can. And um, I'm doing regular live stream performances, which um, people can find if they sign up to my bands in town, bandsintown.com, Shelley Siegel, and uh, that will keep you updated when I have any uh, new performances coming up. So in the song we saw a few minutes ago, the Holy Man song, wasn't that your husband, Rob, playing guitar in there? It was. That was Rob. Um, he had a depressed in Los Angeles t-shirt, ironically. <laughs> <laughs> um, he's, yeah, he's a really talented guitarist, and I, I'm lucky we get to tour together, and he um, performs with me and co-produces on um, a lot of my music. Yeah, well, tell him hello. We've seen him perform with you in concert uh, in different places. So, as a non-religious musician, where do you get your inspiration? Doesn't inspiration have to come from outside of you? Or how would you describe what inspires you to write what you write? You know, so I, a lot of people talk about that in a religious way, or it, you know, it comes from God or comes from somewhere else. And, and sometimes the, the way that the, um, the process is, I can understand why they feel that way, because sometimes it feels like it's not you're not having to work a lot of the time 90 percent of the time it's work i'm having to think you know what's the next line and i have to i have to push but but sometimes it just it just flows and there's just you know it's like you you've seen it's like a dream where everything that you've seen during the day and all your experiences and emotions are there that's the those are the ingredients but then what can come out is new every time to me that it's, it's like a dream you don't create the dream your mind you don't create the dream con consciously your mind creates it for you based on the raw material that you've put in during the day so sometimes I feel like it can it can be like that so the uh, feminism plays a very strong role in your music too we just have about a minute mu minute left but could mm -hmm. you talk a little bit more about that yes absolutely um, I guess in, in terms of that inspiration for me I want my music to help people to question. I want it to embolden them and empower them. I want to learn as much as I can about the world around me and, and put it into song. And because the, the artist that changed me as a young person and made me open to grasp this new worldview, uh, they did that through their songs. And I want to be part of that chain. And I want to 
provide that to other people with my music. So, well, we hope we can get you back to our building here and perform when the pandemic's over. We have a performance stage upstairs, and uh, one of these days we'll have you come back. Uh, we can take our masks off. And, uh, and so, again, how can people find out uh, how, how to go to some of the Zooms you might be holding, more about you? What's your website? So my website is ShellySiegel.com. And uh, you can find out when I'll be playing by going into Bands in Town dot com slash Shelly Siegel. Uh, you can also follow me on all the social medias, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and I, I post regularly there. I also have a Patreon subscription service, uh, patreon.com slash Shelly Siegel, where you can regularly support my music and receive uh, my whole back catalog as well as demos and behind the scenes content. And uh, lastly, av available on all streaming platforms, Spotify, uh, Pandora, Apple Music, well, you have an amazing repertoire already of wonderful music. And, and you can buy the album that I did with her, too. You can actually yes. get that on that site. You can order that on my website. Well, thank you for joining us today, Shelley. It's been a real pleasure to see you, even if it's remotely. And thank you for watching Free Thought Matters. Because Free Thought Matters. Hi, I'm Steve Pinker. In my book, Enlightenment Now, I show that the world has become a better place as reason has been overcoming superstition and tribalism. But the values of the Enlightenment are under attack. That's why I'm a proud member of the Freedom From Religion Foundation, the nation's largest association of free thinkers working to keep state and church separate. Please join me in supporting the Freedom From Religion Foundation to ensure that our government is driven not by religion, but by reason.